Hey everybody, I wanted to share a story that really hits home. Uh, it's a personal story about my path along with Agency MVP. And it starts off two years ago, September 30th, 2017. I asked a fellow agent who I respect, a really smart agent. I go, hey, would you mind taking a look at you know Agency MVP, beta testing it, and give me your honest feedback. And some of the feedback he gave me kind of struck me pretty hard. And here's why. Um, one of the sentences, if the system works so well, why aren't you selling 200 policies a month on a consistent basis? So at the time, two years ago, this agent was producing about 30%, 40% more than my agency. And that really struck a key with me because I realized I wasn't getting across the point of how agency MVP really works, which, you know, another comment he made is if the agent isn't already a data driven person, they never will be, especially if the data takes hours per week to generate. And so at that moment I go, Oh shit. Like I have got to take the mentality of decades of insurance agents ingrained about how they work and operate their systems within their office. And I've really got to change their habits. And I knew it was going to take me time in order to prove this. And I knew, obviously, like he said, I think you'll have far better success with your product if your agency started selling more than anyone else. And, you know, with, with all those comments combined, I now, after two years, have visuals and proof. And hopefully, I can help you and help you change your mind about how important data how data aggregates and how data will protect you from any cyclical market movements. Let me prove my point. So with agency MVP system in year one, please don't get ahead of me or you're just going to get really confused in year one. Let's say that was 2017. We were competitive about 30% of the time in our Dallas market and we only needed a quota hundred households or a thousand households. Each one of these represent, symbols represent a hundred households. With how agency MVP works is it ranks the most valuable, higher premium, multi-line, those people you're gonna make the most revenue off of and most likely to close. Competitive is a big factor in the likelihood of closing. So my staff are focused on those top 300 competitive. In no way, shape, or form do I instantly start selling a lot more households within the first month or two months of agency MVP because technically I didn't change anything other than I started focusing my efforts on those top 300 people. Year two, new business competitive rates start to drop because my rates are increasing against the market. This is true in Dallas-Fort Worth. Our competitiveness went from about 30% to 20%. Now, I have to double my quote volume to increase the amount of new business sales because I'm less competitive most of the time. What Agency MVP does is it takes those extra 200 households or so on and ranks them to the top. But it also identifies key things within the existing non-competitive, like claims falling off, renewal dates, carriers taking rate increases, and it alerts the user and ranks those people up to the top. So that's how it alerts. It doesn't say, hey, you know, pay attention to these new people. It just simply ranks them to the top for you. All you gotta do is call from the top down. Then in year three, if you're competitive 10% of the time, let's say you're in a horrible market condition and you have to quote 3,000 households. Again, it doesn't matter with agency MVP because my staff are only going to be focused their time and efforts on who's most valuable and most likely to close. So something true in my office, my staff over the last two years, I haven't heard them complain about new business rates, even though our market is getting dramatically impacted. I hear complaining all around me. My rates suck. This is terrible. Blah, 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 blah. Guess what guys, my staff are, really insulated from that kind of mentality. Of course they quote new business rates and nine out of 10 aren't competitive and it sucks. 
But guess what? 90% of their day is focused on their sales pipeline. They're only calling the most valuable, most likely to close. It is a completely different mentality within my office versus an agent without agency MVP system, the dagger ag aggregating ranking. You just simply have the same market conditions, yet it really is lists and scattered and you experience the full brunt of what's going on within the, in the agency and with, without agency MVP. You are really within the bounds of your own system. You're only as smart as the systems that you create. And so hopefully this visual gets you to understand the amount of payroll time, okay? The amount of payroll time to work an organized system, how much headcount you need to work this system or without agency MVP, with agency MVP. Now, let's show some proof in the numbers. From 2017, when we started, my average is about 781,000 in premium with one extra producer than I have now in 2019. I had four producers, 2017, fast forward 2019, I had three producers. And within those ye two years, because technically this is a two year period, it looks like three, it's a two year period. Within those two years, my sales have increased over 106%, over double our production, over double our production with less staff because of the fact that we are no longer chasing a random long line of lists and we are no longer not converting our ROI on all these people that we should have converted on, but we weren't tracking properly. My producers have doubled their production because the amount of time they don't spend chasing the wrong people. So when I go back to a comment, like especially if it takes hours per week to generate, by the way, 2017, this individual was doing 40% more production. Fast forward two years with less staff, I'm doing about 40% more production. So you tell me, was it worth it on my end to invest the time, the four to five minutes maybe per household to do it right the first time, to aggregate the data right the first time? so that I have a pipeline that my staff are consistently focused on who they should be focused on regardless of market conditions. That's the proof. You've got to respect the data. You've got to you know, think the future of what's gonna happen in our insurance space. Captive agents are gonna continue to get our margins shrinked. Commissions are being cut. Expenses everywhere are being cut in the captive world. If you are not truly focused on who's most valuable, most likely to close at all times and converting, you know, 70% or I'm sorry, 60% of all of my revenue, which was $700,000 in premium this year, came from prospects that were not competitive and are over 12 months old. So the, the, the original quote is over 12 months old and they became competitive, 700,000 in premium this year alone, because we took four minutes to enter in that original data point. My staff respected the data and we were able to continually increase sales and focus on the right. The mentality in my office is completely different. So hopefully this story really helps you guys understand. And we go back to the comment because it's a very true comment. If the agent isn't already a data-driven person, they never will be. Guys, I got to get you away from that. You've got to become one. It's about to be 2020. You've got to become a data-driven agency. Hope this helps you guys. Look forward to coaching you more on the Think Tank. Have a good one.